Hello everyone and welcome back for another Q&A. Today I will be baking some holiday cookies while I answer your questions. Before I get into that, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for supporting this channel. We now have over 4,000 subscribers, which is truly incredible, so thank you all so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. I also wanted to say that I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season. I know it can be kind of stressful around the holidays, so I hope everyone's able to take really good care of themselves right now, and I hope that this video can just be a few minutes where we just get cozy and bake some cookies together and relax for a bit, no matter what's going on in your life right now. So go ahead and grab yourself a warm beverage and a cozy blanket if you want to, and let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A. So I've tried to arrange the questions into sort of categories so I can timestamp it and people can find them more easily. So my first category is things related to my favorites or hobbies that I enjoy doing. So we'll start off with a classic. What is my favorite color? My favorite color is green and my second favorite color is pink. I really love a light green and a light pink together. I think it's the most adorable color combination of all time. And I really like wearing colors like emerald green because I think it looks really nice with my hair. The next question is what is my favorite Pokemon? I should preface this by saying that I haven't played the newer Pokemon games, so I'm a little bit of an old lady when it comes to recognizing some of the newer Pokemon. Like, I started playing Pokemon Snap, and I'm just looking around like, I don't know what these are, <laughs> some of them. Um, so anyway, I, I think you'll notice that my answers are a bit dated on this one. But oddly enough, my favorite Pokemon is probably Girafferig. I don't know why, I just got really attached to this Pokemon in some of the games that I used to play. I think I just really like its silly tail, and I don't know, it's just, it's kind of cute in a weird way. I also really like Espeon and Umbreon, just the balance between those two, and they're also really beautiful and also cute, so those are also some of my favorites. I also have a soft spot for Feraligator, just because I really enjoyed using it in the games that I played the most when I was younger. My next question is from my friend Alina, who asked if I have any favorite favorite instances of the harp appearing in pop culture. One of them that's kind of seasonally relevant right now is in the movie Rudolph, the claymation one, where they're doing elf practice and they're singing this song for Santa and Santa hates it because he's just grumpy and very mean in this movie. Um, but the elves are, one of them is playing a harp and it's just really fun to see because I already love the claymation style. I think it's really creative and adorable. And so I love seeing this little claymation elf playing a harp. Another one that comes from Terraria or Terraria, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but that video game, I spent a lot of time playing that with my partner and at some point I got a weapon that was like a magical harp and you could like attack people with your music notes. I don't think I was very good at using the weapon, but it made me really happy that I could ride around on a unicorn and play a harp in this video game. And then of course there's Harpo Marx. I mean, he's introduced so many people to the harp and he's also self-trained, which when I was growing up I had to teach myself a lot until I got to college and stuff. But um, I think it's really amazing that he could play so beautifully having taught himself how to be a harpist and to bring the harp to such a broad audience I think is super cool. I feel like there have to be others that I'm forgetting about, but those are the ones that came to mind first. I know that the harp is in like the Legend of Zelda series and stuff, so if anyone else has cool areas where they've seen the harp show up, uh, let me know because I definitely love to look it up or remember whatever I'm forgetting right now. Next, I have a number of questions here. Who is my favorite Deltarune character? It's so hard to pick because I feel like the whole nature of this game is every character is really likable in their own way, but I'm just gonna go with Ralsei. <laughs> just going with my gut. I, I love Ralsei. Um, they also ask, can I draw? And do I have an original character? And those, those are good questions because I actually used to draw constantly when I was younger, and I think at some point I just felt like, oh, I have to focus on music all the time. Um, so that's kind of fallen away, but I have been trying to get back into drawing and when I was younger I used to always I would draw my own original characters and I would make up my own stories and like I said I kind of got away from it and I'm trying to get back into it. So yes, technically um, but I'm kind of working on it right now and who knows maybe I'll get good at drawing again And I also would love to learn pixel art So as I get better at those things, maybe I'll start sharing them in some capacity. So that could be fun They also ask what is my favorite song? That's another really hard question because I love a pretty broad variety of music So it's hard to pick when you're comparing, you know, apples to oranges but the first thing that came to mind was 2112 by Rush. So that's a really long song and within it there's sort of like smaller songs that flow into the next one. Um, and within the song 2112 I really like this portion that's subtitled Discovery. 
And it's basically within this narrative, in this dystopian future, this guy discovers a guitar that's been long forgotten and he just starts strumming it and he's falling in love with the sound of this instrument and he wants to go share his music with everyone. So that just really resonates with me as a musician wanting to share my music with people and just that it captures that moment where you fall in love with your instrument for the first time. So I'll pick that for now, but like I said, it's really hard to pick when there are so many amazing songs out there. So the last question I have here is what are your hobbies? So my hobbies include video games, obviously. <laughs> um, and I also really love baking. Like baking is kind of my go-to when I'm stressed out and I wanna do something I enjoy. I also enjoy other sort of crafty type things. Like I said, I enjoy drawing. I'm trying to learn pixel art. I do origami sometimes and just any anything that's crafty that I can just get my hands on it and create something, um, that's something I really enjoy doing. So the next category of questions I have relates to music and instruments. So I was asked, how difficult is it to get a harp and how hard is it to play? So it depends on what type of harp you want, but it is pretty difficult to get one, especially if it is like a concert grand pedal harp, which is what you see me playing in my videos. So when I was young, there was a music store in our area that happened to have lever harps sometimes. So that's a smaller type of harp. So that's what I started out with. We were able to rent it. And over time, we kind of had to save up a lot of money and kind of gradually switch up to the larger harps. And eventually I got the harp that I have now after many years and like I said, saving up a lot. And I was really lucky to have the support of my parents and grandparents. So it was basically a big group effort for all of us to save up so that I could have the instrument I needed to be a professional harpist. Although I wanna clarify, you can be a professional lever harpist as well. But for me, I knew I wanted to play in orchestras and there is a lot of repertoire that requires the pedals of the pedal harp. So anyway, don't be discouraged if you want to learn the harp but you don't want to spend an insane amount of money on a pedal harp, you don't need a pedal harp to be a harpist. The lever harp is an awesome instrument. It can be really versatile and it tends to be more affordable. So I would definitely recommend looking into the brands Lion and Healy and Dusty Strings if you want to get started playing the harp. And you can even look online for used harps. There's plenty of them out there. And I know that at least Lion and Healy has a rental program for lever harps. So definitely give that a look if you are interested in starting the harp. The next part of this question is how difficult is the harp? And I would say that the nice thing about starting the harp is that as long as your strings are in tune, it will sound fairly nice. You know, there might be details about your articulation that are a little iffy, but the average person isn't going to be super tuned into that. So that's a nice thing when you're starting out the harp. It generally sounds pretty nice to begin with, especially when you compare it to other instruments like the trumpet or the clarinet, where it's so hard to produce the sound in the first place as a beginner that you don't get that instant gratification of hearing a note that sounds pretty nice. So I think the harp is kind of a nice entry point into music because you do get sort of a nice sound sooner than when you learn other instruments that have a more challenging way of producing the sound. But I will say that when you get into more complicated music, when you have to play over the same range of notes in a short period of time, it can be hard to keep your sound nice and clean because you're bumping into strings that you just played and it makes kind of a buzzing sound. So that's one thing that can be challenging is just getting just a really clean resonant sound when you're playing something kind of convoluted. I would also say that when you start playing the pedal harp, having to move all of these pedals at the same time that you're doing something complicated with your hands can be challenging at first. I think it helps to just isolate practicing your pedals on their own and then putting it back together with your hands when you're ready. There's seven pedals and each pedal has three notches. So it's quite a lot going on with your feet and I think people don't necessarily expect that when they start learning the harp. So that can be a bit of a learning curve. But other than that, I mean, I think it's probably similar difficulty to a lot of other instruments. It's just we create sound in a different way. So it just has its own set of challenges. My next question is, other than the harp, what is your favorite instrument? So it's sort of a category of instruments. I love percussion as well as harp, and I've always played both harp and percussion, but right now I don't have access to very many percussion instruments, which is kind of a bummer. But within the category of percussion instruments, I would say the marimba is my favorite for sure. I actually debated with myself before I went to college. I was like, do I want to major in marimba or do I want to major in harp? So I, I really love the marimba and the vibraphone. They're really beautiful and resonant, sort of similar to the harp in a way. My next question is, what's your favorite piece to play on the harp? So my favorite piece to play is by Carlos Salzedo. It's called Scintillation. And it's basically this showpiece for harp 
it's very flashy in some sections, but it's also kind of spooky in other sections. So I love that there's a big contrast, like I can show a really large range of expression in my playing in the piece. And I feel like I really just get to dig in and just play the instrument. If you look up the piece, you'll see what I'm talking about. And there's also some really cool special effects that are in this piece that we don't get to do a whole lot. So definitely my most fun to play piece. And they also asked if I play other instruments, what are my favorite pieces to play on those? So I'd say for marimba, I really like all of the solos by the composer Eric Samut. And in particular, I think my favorite to play was a piece called Stroboscope. So I would definitely recommend looking up his music. His marimba solos are really beautiful and I loved playing them. Next category of questions are related to video games. So this person asks, Undertale or Deltarune, which is better in your opinion? I think this is really hard to say since we haven't seen the entirety of Deltarune yet, but I think based on the first two chapters, I definitely think it has potential to be an improvement on Undertale. I mean, I think the fighting system for me is more engaging than in Undertale, and all of the characters have such compelling backstories that we're just getting to learn about, and I think we're going to see even more in the coming chapters. But at the same time, I think it's a little bit hard to gauge because when we started playing Deltarune, assuming that you played Undertale first, you have this love of these characters already baked in from playing Undertale, so it's hard to separate them. I, I, I can't really look at them as completely separate entities even though he says they're supposed to be separate. So it's hard to say because we might not love Deltarune as much if we hadn't played Undertale first. So it's complicated, but I have high hopes for the rest of Deltarune. Next question is what's my favorite game? This may be surprising since the bulk of my content is based on Undertale and Deltarune, but my favorite game actually has to be Stardew Valley. It's just my ultimate comfort game. I started playing it with my partner, so we put a lot of hours in it together, and I also have played it by myself, like, a lot. And somehow I never get tired of it, it's just, it, it feels safe and comforting every time I go back to play it. I also have a lot of respect for Eric Baroni, and in the similar way that he and Toby Fox, you know, they created their own games basically by themselves, and I'm just really inspired by that, like, being able to take something so huge on by yourself and to create this complete artwork that's just so full of heart. I, I just really admire it. Next question is, do you listen to Toho music? And I actually had to look up what this is, so the answer is no, unfortunately. I found a video on YouTube explaining like what the series was and how there's so much music in it, and I guess there's over 360 tracks, so that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with it, but if there are specific tracks you want me to cover, feel free to let me know and I'd be up for giving it a try. Last category of questions I have here have to do with kind of reflecting on my channel. So my friend CityFolk66 asks, what was your favorite cover to work on during 2021? I think it's probably between Big Shot and Ghost Fight. So Ghost Fight was something that I knew I wanted to get up and I wanted to make a cover, and I managed to kind of arrange and record the whole thing in one day. So it was just this really satisfying storm of creativity that I was really happy with the result with. Um, so that was a fun one to have like the drum tracks and the harp tracks, and it was a piece that I really, really enjoyed. So that's one, but Big Shot was also really satisfying because I felt like I was able to really recreate the original pretty well, even though when I first heard it, I thought, oh, this isn't gonna work on the harp, but I made it work. Um, it was a lot of effort, but the, the result of it was really satisfying. That's definitely my most viewed video. I think it has at least 150,000 views at this point. So it was harder to make that video compared to Ghost Fight, where it felt like it was flowing pretty well. Uh, Big Shot was a pretty big challenge to record, but it was really satisfying and I was just so happy that so many people saw it and enjoyed it. And my last question is, how hard has it been balancing work, content, and personal life? What do you hope to achieve in 2022? I feel like I've been able to balance things pretty well. Um, the main challenge for me is that I kind of get in my own head. The thing that's most stressful for me is, you know, I read all the comments and I try to get back to you and I have so many good suggestions of songs to cover. And so I'll be like, 
oh yeah, I'm gonna try to do this soon. And then like months pass and I haven't played it because there's, you know, I, I can only record so many. Um, I don't have unlimited time to record. So I start to feel really guilty that like, oh, I told this person I was gonna do this and I haven't done it yet. And you know, it's never that I would tell someone I'm gonna do something when I really don't mean it. It's just finding the time I think it's just hard for me to feel like I'm not getting to everyone's requests in a timely fashion, even though I know deep down that it's just physically impossible for me to complete all of them like at once. Um, but that's, that's I think the challenge that I want to work through in the coming year is just kind of balancing getting people's requests played without feeling guilty or stressed out about it. And something else I want to do in the coming year is to have a really regular upload schedule. So that's something that I'll just need to work out how can I make sure that I always have a video ready to go without stressing myself out? So it's always just a balance of, I want to post way more videos, but I also know that, you know, you all are very supportive and you don't want me to make myself miserable trying to crank content out. So that's just a balance I want to strike. Regular uploads would be great. I want to start playing a broader variety of music. I know that lots of you join because you like Deltarune music or Undertale, and I'm planning to continue playing those, but I do want to start branching out and getting a broader variety of people's requests rather than being kind of so narrow in what I'm playing all the time. I would also really like to branch out into some other types of content. So there is an idea I have for an original album of music that would be harp plus chiptunes. So I was kind of experimenting with that in my holiday studio video and I was really happy with it. So I'd like to start posting more of original music from me, but I hope that won't kind of lose people's interest because I know folks are joining because they like specific video game music they already know. So that's something that I'm a little nervous about, but I hope people will be receptive to it. And I would also love to do some videos where I'm sharing commentary on certain things or maybe doing a little bit of like gameplay, but I know that's not why people subscribe to this channel, so I'm still deciding how I want to approach that. Maybe just once per month I post something that's a little bit different, but every week I have, you know, your video game covers, so that's something I'm still thinking about, but I think it would be fun to do other things. I've always been someone who has a lot of different interests. I don't like just doing one thing and one thing only. So that's something I'm excited about trying, but we'll just see where it goes. And that's it for our holiday Q&A. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your questions. I really appreciate your support and I hope the rest of your year goes really well. I'm looking forward to playing lots of new music for you in the new year. I'll see you then.